Well, since we're ending 2021 right now, we might as well do a review for our first video in 2022. And I got a special one for y'all. I mean, as all of you know, I'm a pretty massive Sonic fan. I mean, you can tell by the many Sonic playthroughs I've done on the channel. But for today, I wanted to review an especially underrated gem for the Wii. And I do, and actually, a childhood classic of mine. This game. I actually received this game like a couple of years ago, thanks to my brother for like, I think it was like either Christmas or like just like a present or something. This isn't actually the copy that my brother gave to me because I actually decided to break that one out of fear of certain events happening during my lifetime. Yep, I have had a history with this game, if you weren't aware of it. I mean, you could kind of almost kind of see it whenever I actually played through the game. Yes, I will get to those parts later. But this copy, I actually went, went to Georgia to buy this one. I mean, I just happened to, to come across this one in a flea market that happens to sell video games. I got this one along with WarioWare Smooth Moves, which you can see like, like, I mean, you can see like right there, like all the pink text, that's WarioWare. But with all the storybook crap on the way, it's time to review Sonic and the Secret Wastes. But before we do that, uh oh, it's streaming time! Originally, this game was going to be titled Sonic Wildfire since it had. You know what a type of theme it is, it's freaking fire! But Sega decided to change it to Sonic and the Secret Rings to fit in with the Arabian Nights feel of the game. And that was some trivia before the real review of the game began, so stay tuned! Our story begins with Sonic sleeping on the couch, as you do. Then, a mysterious voice wakes him up from his sleep in his house. I guess Sonic is a housekeeper then. He then grabs a ring from, from his desk, then brings forth Shara. The genie, genie of, of the, the ring. ring. Thanks, Shara. And then she tells us about the Eraser Jin. Basically, he's the bad guy of this game, and his plot is basically to not only to destroy the Arabian Nights, but to destroy the real world as well. But then Sonic grabs the rings from the box ah. art. Some shenanigans happen, and then it's off to the world of the Arabian Nights. The game plays with you using the Wii Remote to do any kind of like weird motion to do basic moves like tilting left to right to move left to right, tilting back to move back, pushing forward to do a homing attack, but you still get to use buttons like to jump, one to break, literally you use one to break, and the, the control pad for a special move, but one thing, I, one thing I want to address is that people's complained about the controls. I mean, while they may not be perfect, there are people calling these controls a broken mess, but hey. These aren't the worst controls I've ever had to experience. And this game also has like this RPG-like system, which means you have looked to you can level up and unlock skills that make you like turn faster, run faster, unlock certain skills, which help you make the game a bit more fun. But isn't the game meant to be fun from the start? Hmm. Some kind of suspicious there. Anyways, back to the plot. Eraser Jin now curses Sonic with the Flame of Judgment, and now they have to find the Seven, seven world, world Rings. Rings. Thanks, Eraser. I was just getting to that. This introduces you to the game's surprisingly well put together mission system. Even if the requirements might be out of order, and you might have to access some of the missions during the post game. And I forgot to mention the level design. This has some of the best level design in a Sonic game. I mean, the controls don't complement it. But hey, who I wants to play a Sonic game where you ride a freaking magic carpet ride? Shining no one? Well, shame on you! One thing this game changes up in the story is that there are, the characters that you know from other Sonic games, they're actually a actual characters from the Arabian Nights. Sinbad! Tails is Alibaba, Eggman is King Shariar, and Knuckles is Sinbad, so... Is Sonic meant to be Aladdin or something? As we progress further into the story, Sonic gets the ability of the Soul Gauge, which allows him to use two different abilities. Speed Boost, which is basically a double boost. 
can do that by pressing up with the control pad and time break, which basically gives you Zawadada! You barely use this, by the way. These actually spice up the gameplay from just being a wild fest. And yes, I also forgot to mention the boss fights! They're actually cool and original, since they break up the norm of just being Eggman or Metal Sonic or Bowser on a beat. And the music for those boss fights and the stages is amazing, giving us that Middle Eastern theme that this game gives us. And by the way, Kabana Money 456's intro theme is actually from this game. So take a look to it! No way, no way, no way, no way, Dude, we have ascended, we have ascended, we are Jesus Christ Hedgehog. We have ascended, we have ascended, we are Jesus Christ Hedgehog. And after we manage to collect the other world rings, we finally get to go to the final stage of the game, Night Palace. I mean, the stages are original, and the graphics, which I forgot to mention, are actually pretty good for a Wii game. So, let's go to Night Palace. And after that amazing stage, no, seriously, that stage is actually pretty good. We got to fight Eraser J. And by the way, he can be pretty hard, but somehow I managed to beat him! The track also used for this one is awesome. Even if the lyrics are a little bit repetitive, but still, it's still an awesome track nonetheless. And after that boss fight, we see a door that has seven holes, and if you've been paying attention to the story, it says here that if we get the rings, the portal to the other world shall open, but the life of the collector of the rings shall be offered up in sacrifice. So yeah, we are gonna sacrifice ourselves! But before we get to the final boss, a, a little something about Eraser Jin that said in-game, that he was it was actually said that he is the genie of the lamp. So that yeah. Can... yeah. I don't see that being the main bad guy of the game. But if you want to count Jafar as the genie, then maybe that would make sense. Anyways, back to the plot. Shark can't decide to help so she has a mental breakdown and falls asleep on the floor. Then Eraser tries to turn Sonic into a headline, but instead Shara takes the hit and freaking dies. And what I like about this one is that Shara doesn't want to kiss Sonic. They're just like really good friends. That's the one thing I really like about the story. Is that they don't fall into the loophole of Sonic falling in love with a human, so yeah. That's probably for the best. But we are not done yet, since we have to get the freaking final transformation. This abomination of nature. Don't worry, he isn't the only one that has a transformation. We get Dark Spine Sonic, boys! Here we are at the final boss. I'm Flayla Walayla. And you know what this means? Waggle time! But challenge after challenge, waggle after waggle, we managed to beat him. It may not have been the easiest fight in the world, but then Sonic decides to roast Hollywood for their lazy story writing. Next time, try writing a better story! After that epic workout of a fight, Sonic asserts his dominance right? by sitting on Eraser's gamer throne and forcing him to grant three wishes for Sonic. Switch 1, bring Shara back to life. Wish 2, return the Arabian Nights stories back to normal. Wish number 3, Trap Eraser Jin in the lamp forever. And now, he is not a rat anymore. I'm a hedgehog. <laughs> I 
I wish for a mountain of handkerchiefs. Now, just let yourself cry as much as oh, you want. Oh, this is actually kind of sweet. To help you through it. And so that was Sonic and the Secret Rings. Was it perfect? No, most definitely not. Despite the waggle fest, I still managed to enjoy the game. But the party mode, I'm not gonna mention the party mode, I mean, it's there, but it's just bad motion controls. And bad mini games, bad board games, I mean, you get to play as other characters and all that, but I'm not gonna leave, I'm gonna, not gonna mention that in the actual review. I mean, I might do a bonus episode of the party mode, but whatever. I'm just gonna stick to the regular play for a minute. But, I mean, the rest of it was actually pretty good. You got a good story, you got some good voice acting, some amazing music, and some actually original bosses. Come on, that's what I'm needing in my Sonic Frontiers, and Sonic Breath of the Chili Dogs. But even if this game was a childhood classic of mine, it's still not perfect suffers from having motion controls, having that mess, you have to do a whole lot of things to do with it. But still, not a horrendous Sonic game. I mean, it's a good Sonic game, but compared to other Sonic games, this one is kind of like the bottom there, like the bottom best. But it's like below forces. I mean, I might do forces in a future episode. Six out of ten! Well, anyway, that was my review of Sonic and the Secret Rings. I hope you liked it. And if you want to see more reviews like this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. Also, follow the description below. We got my Steam, my Discord, my Letterbox, where I review movies in the most crazy sense of the term, and my Instagram. I love you guys. May God be with you. Bye-bye. See you later, and here's to 2022!